Hello, everybody. Okay, so uh, I'm back here at home, kind of organizing everything, kind of taking a look at the big picture, and uh, let's do some talking here. Uh, over the last, I don't know, a couple weeks or so, there's been a lot of hubbub regarding Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine. So let's go over this just a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to restate some things because there are some people who really have not heard it yet, uh, who are not really taking it in uh, wholly, so let's go over it again. In order for there to be created, <laughs> my little Inca girl's over here playing and bumping my arm, so this could be kind of a jangly picture. Uh, I think sometime this week I'll be able to figure out and use the GoPro that Jeannie got me, and then Tara got me a couple pieces, uh, a little tripod <laughs> in this clippy thing. So uh, I think I'll be able to start using that. And uh, hopefully these, these videos will come out a little bit better at that point. Okay, back to the point at hand. In order for the creator of this game to get humanoid beings on a planet down to the lowest frequencies, the lowest vibrations, it was necessary to do certain things. Okay, so first Gaia came in as a feminine planet. That does not mean she is feminine, uh, a, a girl, so to speak. It's just the vibrations on the planet, something had to be uh, decided on. And when you come in as a planet in this dualistic creation, you have to basically choose sides in a lot of areas because it is a dualistic um, creation. That was the whole point. So uh, she decided, whatever reason, to come in on the feminine side. It could have just as easily, she could have come in on the masculine side and then the other, the opposite would have occurred. So when she came in as a, a feminine planet, in order to take the vibrations low and out of the divine feminine and masculine arena to get them into the lower vibrations so that the creator gods who came to this game could play is she had to, that feminine vibration had to be lowered. Well, because on the planet there are all kinds of beings that are feminine and masculine, that divine feminine had to be kicked to the curb. It had to be taken out. The way that that was done is masculine came in in shadow or undivine uh, vibratory ways in order to cause the feminine to go into undivine ways. Never have I said ever that the feminine on this planet is divine. I have said over and over again that on this planet uh, in the third dimension, especially, <laughs> that both the divine—I mean, both the divine masculine and feminine—are out of whack. They are not in divine at all. Now we're into fourth dimension. Okay, so in that process, uh, the divine masculine basically we're going to make this simple, although it's much more complex than this. The masculine got mean and started controlling and beating up the feminine. Feminine responded in fear and started to do what was ever necessary in order to survive, leading the divine feminine to frequently be very cunning and manipulative. And that's big picture, okay? Big picture. In order to get us back the other direction, we have to understand this. It is one of the biggest things that was done in order to uh, create the lower the ability for beings to be in the lower third dimensional vibrations and it is probably the biggest one but I went ahead and threw it out there anyway uh, just to get the ball rolling even though it is one of the more complex ones this is also true on the inside of each person who has both feminine and masculine so that is why things like um, Females are the weaker sex, uh, females are uh, emotional, uh, you shouldn't be emotional. Um, any of the cuts to the feminine-like actions uh, were also demeaned in order to cover all the different layers of vibration, 
Okay. Also, anybody who exhibits, especially a man who exhibits any of the female characters, was demeaned. All of this was a part of lowering the vibration on the planet so the entities could play. No more, no less. No big deal. But in order to get back out of it, you have seen even with the group that has followed me for a long time. And let me assure you guys, you only know by watching the videos, you only know a small portion of what is going on with the family. Because all, most of the emails go to me. And there I get a lot of emails. A lot of emails as people try to work through these struggles. Now, the point of the family is to help each other understand this and to try to come out of it. Now, the reason why it is done by the reptilians and kind of run by the reptilians is there are certain battles that have been worked on and built and uh, built on for millions of years. One of the first one, of course, that was created was the male-female controversy. That controversy has led to a lot of energy being produced by the humans for the reptilians. Because there is so many low energies coming off of this setup that they've created, that we've created, that was agreed upon. Because the women live in a lot of fear um, about what will happen to them at the hands of a man, man in all arenas. And these will be covered really uh, by Stephanie and Mai's video. So there's a lot of fear energy coming off of the females. And it is intense. And it is worldwide. And it gives the reptilians a great deal of energy. From the man's side, because they're in the undivine side, they exude a great deal of, of anger. Uh, anger is definitely what the reptilians live on from the male side of this scenario. Now, of course, women also get angry and they feed the reptilians that way. Men also get uh, sad and despondent. The whole setup, when the male and the female are a breakdown, they're, they're one of the original or the original division of self into two parts, dividing you as a person into two separate parts, that of being male and female, there's a constant desire, a longing for those two parts to come back together and be whole. That is why people search each other out. And whether they are in a male body or a female body, that feminine aspect and that male aspect are always trying to come together and, and create a oneness that is missing. And that inability to do so because of all of the scenarios that have been set up over all of these years, leaves a despondency and a sadness. Again, a lower vibration, very powerful, feeding the reptilians. So, the conversation, now that it's kind of out there, and you all have, have seen the response that you instinctually had of defending the feminine or defending the masculine, of the sadness and loss of this division between these two sides of who we really are. Because, of course, on the other side, we're not male or female. And I mean outside of this creation altogether. Because that was created to be a part of the dualistic game that is here. So in that longing of wanting to connect with one another in that way and bring us back to a, a, a wholeness that we're missing creates all of these low, intense vibes. And they've been done in such a way that, that when there's, there's a large amount of men and women who have very, very strong, very specific feelings on this matter. Because they're broke down like this and these bad guys, well, we're going to call them bad guys, but you know me, there's no good, there's no bad, but we're going to title them that because they don't have a choice right now. So in order to get this done, which all of the beings, specifically the ones you know about, uh, the reptilians and the Illuminati group, uh, they were kind of uh, 
charged or volunteered to create this division. This, I've told you, it's very, very, very difficult to get a god into a human body and experience these low things in amnesia. But probably the biggest, the next most difficult thing to do was to, to divide the aspect into male and female. And it's divided in many, many subtle ways as well as that major one. But when they divided these into two separate sides and then created animosity, or we did, in order to create those lower vibrations, it took a great deal of work. Uh, it was very, very intricately woven and done. And in the process, when they did this division, they were able to, like I told you before, if there's one plus one and two people are consciously co-creating something, with intent, then it has a multi it multiplies. So one plus one equals five times as much energy. Well, what they've done is they've done this with the male female issues, the anger and the distrust and the fear and uh, the depression, all of this. And they've made it so that around the world, no matter what, um, where you live or what color your skin is or what your um, culture is that pretty much around the world there is this significant division between women who have been subjugated by powerful men okay pretty much phenomenal that you that they got this done now when they did that because it is around the world all women or feminine aspects that feel afraid and feel subjugated Think on these things at the same time. So basically, we'll, we'll, we'll say um, there's 7 billion people on the planet. Um, we'll say a third of them are um, children. So we'll get it down to five. Of that five, everybody else is going to be divided into one or two categories. They're going to live predominantly as a feminine aspect and the other a masculine aspect no matter what sex you are okay so what they've done is that other uh, five billion people they've cleanly cut them into a two and a half bill and two and a half billion on each side now of course there's exceptions to all rules I'm not talking about that I am talking from a big picture so they will continue to divide in many other ways but this major division that goes around the planet in spite of Anywhere that you've lived, in any way that you've lived, this uh, vibration is out there being created. And because there are two and a half billion on each side, and all of that is multiplied, and they're all working together, you can see how huge the vibrations are coming off of humanity in this regard. Now, of course, they also do it by pitting the races against each other, um, different kinds of government, education, all these other things happen on top of that. But this main, main issue goes around the world dividing the men and the women, masculine and feminine. Okay. Now, it is so overwhelming and it is so huge. And you've seen from the response of a very um, strong response whenever I bring up the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine, that that's how deeply embedded these concepts are. And in order for them to work, there has to be a lot of concepts that make, lead a person to believe that, um, that what they are doing, how they are feeling is acceptable, that it is honorable, that it is absolutely the thing to do. So for me to say uh, to the women, uh, this is all game. Uh, it was done on purpose. Gaia and you agreed to it, as you did every other female on the planet. So uh, get over it already. Uh, understand that it is a game and we're coming out of the game. If you do not, and then turn around to the guys and say the same thing. All of it was agreed on, including Gaia's role. Every man agreed to do this. Without that kind of overwhelming um, 
unification on a concept because Gaia is the planet and she is what everything's made up of, it would have been impossible to take this planet to the third dimension. So it had to be a collective consciousness agreement to do these things in order to get to the place where the game was played or the setting where it was played. And in order for everybody to stay on that setting, which is 3 slash 4D Earth, there has to be that still involved. Okay, so I threw it out there as a baseline for y'all to start to work with. But ultimately, because it is so big, it is so basic, it is so much a big percentage of the energy that the reptilians, etc., are living on, and using to do everything else. If we got that fixed, like right now, in the next week, magically, everyone listened to me. There was no more animosity between the men and the women. There was uh, the men listening to the women about where they were scared and immediately supporting and altering it. The women immediately feeling that support, so no longer feeling feared, so therefore not manipulating or being conniving. If that happened immediately, the rest of everything else I've taught you to, to do would be unneeded. Because there would be such a change, a shift on the planet and the planetary makeup of the drop, the, the dropping of fear and anger would drop so fast and so completely that everything would change overnight in a split second, really. Because it is the baseline of like everything everything it was the first division it was the first one that they uh started developing ways that human beings could have reactions and then be what we would consider low reactions that the reptilians could get uh, uh, could feed on could collect the data and feed on so you probably will not have it down right off the bat you probably, every single one of you, have arenas or areas in this divine masculine and feminine area that you have not uh, straightened out or gotten through. But what I wanted to, to see if I could get you to do, which went fairly well, lots better this time than Jeremy and G-Man, was instead of fighting about it, was to really listen to what I had to say, which was, it's all a game, guys. Uh, it's all a game. But... In order to get out, we have to go from here to here. So you have to note, each and every one of you, what your feelings are according to the masculine and feminine side. So that you can begin to recognize them, tweak them, and fix them as you run across them in your day-to-day -day life and thinking. Uh, just by considering it, you are immediately drawing yourself out of the pool of energy that the reptilians and the Illuminati are living off of. And I'm good with that start. That's a good start. But if you did it all at once, we would all of us be in 5D and above. So it's not going to happen all at once because it is so intensely built. But I do want y'all to uh, love each other, support each other. There will be, remember that depending upon how you were raised and how strong the belief system was, Take, for instance, in my household and everyone that I knew in the small towns that I was raised in, uh, that it was understood that women stayed home and raised the children, that they that the man was the head of the, head of the house, that it was uh, expected for the man to uh, hit the woman and the child or the children to keep them in place that if he didn't, he was judged very harshly, that men were not allowed to cry at all. Uh, and this is just baseline understood. This is the way it was. I'm 57. This was the way it was when I was growing up, easily until I was, um, oh, I don't know. I would say it's still pretty, pretty prevalent in the small towns, but they just don't talk about it as much. But that was just within the last couple, the last few decades. Okay, guys. So it is still very prevalent. So what, as you walk through your days together or with other people, what I want you to do is kind of do what Jeremy's doing in that. That's look and see if you are connecting and being a part 
of that dualistic aspect or are you not? Every time that you disconnect from all of the things that are done day to day that keep us apart, the feminine and the masculine, then your energy is feeding the reptilian Illuminati uh, system. Okay? Every time you pause and uh, you see a, a guy wolf whistle a woman, you don't have to go over and make a big scene about it. I'm not asking you to do that. What I'm asking you to do is to consciously at that point, don't say, it doesn't matter. I want you to say, because you listened to yourself and each other, that it is uh, immediately scary and it feels like you're a dog. It feels like um, very condescending. Um, feels like those kind of things. So whether or not you understand that or not, I want you to simply pause and and uh, hear it from the other side the other side and accept it and say, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to be on a planet where everyone feels free and open and that there's no fear and no no somebody being over somebody else. So I, I want to love those people over there for creating their game. I hope they enjoy it. But for me, I'm going to a collective where that stuff's not going to happen. Okay. Now, as you go through moment to moment, day to day, what makes you feel bad is not going to be the same as everybody else. So if you're around someone where you can explain it and they'll listen, uh, please do so. So if you're a woman and you're being catcalled, which you probably shouldn't be if you're following me, but let's say it happens. Then uh, let's let's just turn around and nicely go back and start a dialogue with the man involved. Explain to him why uh, you don't like it, why it feels uncomfortable. Instead of running from these things or fighting, which is what I'm seeing happening, there's either a running away from it or fighting about it. Instead of running or fighting, let's try communicating. Both sides being uh, able to listen to it. Ladies, these guys have been raised this way from the get-go. So as much as you have been uh, treated badly and controlled and you're afraid, they're afraid also because if they don't follow these rules, very, very precise rules, then they get harassed as well. And it's, it can be pretty horrendous. I know I've been around it a lot. So they need our support as well. Because when a guy stands up against the norm like that and says, no, that's not right, I'm going to do this differently. They are themselves at risk for not having a safe place to be. So let's, let's work together and let the the guys create a warm, a man, each one of you men or masculine energies, pref, uh, start to present a safe place for the feminine can be. And then feminine, whenever you feel it, ultimately it's going to come from you. When you can feel it in your collective, go to those men and give them a safe place with you as well. This communicating back and forth this walking our way back into unity with one another is very important. But in the process, there must, must be a truthfulness in what's going on. And there must be support on both sides that you both want it different. Now, what is going on right now, as you know, nothing's wrong with it. It is a grand experience and party. I am absolutely talking to the entities that want to go to 5D, long-term human or star seeds or whatever, okay? I'm just talking to you. And in order to get to 5D, what I just said in this video must occur, must occur. Uh, you cannot, you will, you cannot get to 5D by saying, okay, it's all the women's fault because they raised the boys and they, uh, so therefore what they're taught and how they're taught to be is the woman's fault. 
And it cannot happen with all the women saying everything bad that's ever happened on this planet, and to me personally, are, is men's fault. It can't happen with that either, okay? You have to rise above it all. You have to rise above it all and look at it objectively. As long as you are in the middle of the battle and you're fighting to be right, you cannot go to the fifth dimension. Sorry, I didn't make the rules. Talk to G-Man about that. But it is not an event thing. Uh, so many people in this conversation are caught up in the Im events that happened, the feelings that they had. And we do need to analyze the events, and we do need to analyze the feelings and the emotional repercussions on both sides. But all of it, does you do not need to do it with emotions. And believe me, both sides, masculine and feminine, have been very emotional during this exchange. And you cannot look at it to recreate or to create something new. If you do it from that perspective, you're just doing what has always been done. And you're not only going to not change it, but you're going to make it worse. Okay. You have to be able to objectively look at this and understand how the creation of these lower vibrations were done so that you could undo them. You cannot do them, do that while you are looking into a situation and responding so completely low vibratorily because all that does is it adds to everything around the world because there's a lot of it and it is amplified and it feeds the Illuminati and the reptilians. There are a lot of people around the planet, me included, that are working hard on every layer from physical on to try to basically cut off the energy flow from the reptilians and the Illuminati so that they will either leave planet, whether they die or whether they leave on a spaceship, or they switch sides, which leads to another thing. If you are so adamant on your side being right, not only will you not be able to go to unity consciousness, but you you don't allow or you will not be able to see the people on the bad guy's side that are switching sides to go to 5D. And as I said, there will be a lot of them and they will not be who you expect. But if you're so caught in judgment that you cannot, judging your way as being right, the way you think is right, the listing of, of ways that support what you are right, you will not be able to see the subtle reaching out in the desire of the lower vibratory beings, especially the long-term human ones that are playing um, reptilian in form, especially those beings that you will not be able to tell that they're reaching out to switch sides. So you will not be able to welcome them into the oneness. The oneness is not the good guys, remember. The good guys are the pigeons, as you would know it. The bad guys are the geckos, as you would know it. And who we are, who I am, I shouldn't speak for you. Who I am is everything. I'm not good guy, I'm not bad guy. I'm everything. I accept everything. I understand that everything, everywhere, is a part of me. And I'm a part of it. Every event, every word, every deed, every person. So I am not going to... Um, fight for the good guys anymore, then I will fight for the bad guys. So I'm not going to get on board and say, yes, the, the, the guys did all these horrible things, so they should be punished. No, 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 no. They did exactly what they were asked to do, what they volunteered to do, and all of the feminine and masculine played this game on purpose because they either wanted to be involved in it for the creationary end result, or they wanted to support a friend who wanted to create this. So I am not here, and that, see, that's the, the issue a lot, is that there's people arguing over good and bad. Well, arguing over whether something is good or bad is judgment, and it will not get you to 5D. 
So the discussion needs to be much more like, I am so sorry that that happened to you. I'm so sorry that you got treated like that. But remember, it's a game, and you agreed to come here, and both sides had to be here for, for to create this game, and now we're helping Gaia. Now that's what we're doing. We're helping Gaia. So the best we can do that is to be happier, happier, happier. Yeah, that's the only way it can be done. So when somebody comes in and they do a, a, a good thing or a bad thing, either one, you need to sit back objectively, smile, and say, cool game, but it has nothing to do with me. I am going to raise my vibrations, and I'm going to the fifth dimension, and then from there, I'm going to go home. All right? Does that make any sense? I hope. Alrighty then. It's uh, good to be back. The energies here are much, much different. And I do have some things to say about the areas that I crossed. But I'll do that in a different time. And it is uh, a lot different vibration, so I'm trying to get my feet under me a little bit. But uh, thank you, Dominique and Tara and Krista and Jeannie, for being such lovely hostesses. Uh, I felt very comfortable it is loved and nurtured during this part of the of my job on this planet, the major one. Uh, I apologize to everyone else on the list, but uh, that is a completely different. What I figured out, I wrote this to people and they know, but what I figured out is the northern aspect of the trip was really built on some personal things for me. And uh, doing the thing on New Year's Eve and hitting the grid, the big grid, with the energy and getting it rotating up and down, up and down completely. And the second part of the trip is going to be much more um, like groups around campfires, uh, talking in a way that kind of talks specifically about the things that I am, I'm all about. Uh, that's what the Southern trip is more about. It's about sharing this information and uh, sharing it with each other and me sharing it with all of you. Very different vibration than the North where there was, although there was sharing and a lot of it, usually it was, it just popped in and popped out. Um, then the part with Tara at the end, um, I'll be working with her hopefully to get a lot of that information out of to you because what I was able to do with her was to see her vibrate and react to things in uh, the Inglewood, New York, New Jersey area as we went from place to place and did thing to thing. So I was able to show her how, to, how I looked at it and how she could recognize it. And uh, she was already reading vibrations massively by the time I left. Massive difference between the beginning and the end. It's not that you guys don't read vibrations. It's just you don't realize you're doing it. So that is my, what I'm trying to do is help you learn how to do it consciously. Okay, mouth is really dry. I need something to drink. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, love you guys so, 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 so much. Very proud to see these groups that are getting on in the evening and visiting with each other. So how does that feel, guys? How does that feel? Does that feel like you're developing a community, a, a family collective, so to speak, where you won't always agree, but hopefully there'll be people that will help you with issues? Um, I'd love to see that grow uh, massively. And uh, I pop in when I can. If you guys are there tonight, I'll probably uh, click in for tonight. All right, that's it. Uh, I love you guys so much again. Huge hugs, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.